Show me a move. Good news, everyone. Don't keep enough dignity when you see it. Onions have legs. Ah, <laughs> oh, welcome to 20th Century Boy. My name is Loctio Down 6.0. And this is the inside of my mind. Thank you so much for being here, as the name suggests. And I don't usually reuse names because at the sorry guys, if you're new to the podcast, at the start of every podcast I do a different uh, name for me. And it usually follows the conventions of Radio Mike. So it, you know, it could be Biggio head, right? Because I have a big head. But you're welcome to send them in. RadioMikePod at gmail.com or radio.mike on Instagram. I would appreciate that. Would love to hear from you. Um, I obviously have done Loctio down in the past. Uh, but I decided to use it again this week because as soon as we got out of lockdown, we were pretty much back into lockdown. We had a one-week taste of freedom here in Melbourne uh, we're back in. I believe Sydney is back in. I think Queensland is largely out. Uh, I could be wrong about that. And yeah, most of the East Coast of Australia is back in COVID lockdown now. It is terrible. It sucks. We hate her, Mr. G. She sucks. That's a quote from Summer Heights High that I always quote. Um, we hate her, Mr. G. She sucks. If you know, you know. My name's Radio Mike. Welcome to my podcast, 20th Century Boy, a podcast about me, Radio Mike, the guy you're listening to right now, Australia's most lovable nerd, um, uh, trying to make his way through the rough and tumble of being an adult and being alive in this big, wide world, which is sometimes uh, harder than other times. At the moment, it's not particularly hard. It's just incredibly boring and uh, especially depressing. And like, I don't use that term lightly because I realise there are different levels of depression. Um, But I would say that just generally I have this burnout from lockdown um, and I'm really unmotivated. I'm tired all the time. I don't really want to do anything. I don't really want to work very hard and I'm finding it really difficult to just exist at the moment. Um, And this one, lockdown 6.0, obviously the sixth Melbourne lockdown. Um, the th- I think it was the first one that was the longest. I can't actually, I can't quite remember. The first one was like three months. The second one was maybe a, a month. And I've lost track. But the last one, 5.0, was a two-week lockdown that happened literally three weeks ago, right? We came out of it. We all thought, great, things are going to be fine now. We're all you know, we've made it out of this, touch wood, we're all good, we've done a lockdown, we've done a circuit breaker lockdown, we are out of here, right? We're going back into the real world, we're going out for drinks, we're having a bloody blast. We were wrong. Within one week, we're back in lockdown. It's a huge shame. Um, And yeah, things are really boring. And as I spoke at length last week, and thanks to everyone who, who wrote in to me, just like feeling like life is on hold, like not sure how to progress into the next stages of life. You know, I guess I've realised during this pandemic that, I don't know, I'm nearly 27, which means I'm nearly 28, which means I'm nearly 30. And I'm feeling like I haven't accomplished all I want to accomplish, but I can't accomplish anything at the moment, really, because life is static and on hold. And that's, I guess, okay. Like everyone's in the same boat, but here we are. And it's it's very weird. It's very strange. It's very odd. Daniel Andrews, uh, an, an honorary welcome to the radio family to Daniel Andrews, the premier of Victoria. If you are from Melbourne, you are familiar with Daniel Andrews, obviously, the North Face wearing premier of Victoria. Um, a good dude, you know, a, a nice dude who's doing his best in a bad situation. But what I just... Like I said, this is the worst lockdown because we thought we were out, we're back in, and now we're just like, this could be one week, which it's supposed to end on Thursday. I can't see it ending on Thursday based on all the new cases. It might be another two weeks. It could be three, could be months, right? And I think that sucks. However, I just love, I love how at the start of lockdown 5.0, Dan Andrews said something along the lines of, Guys, you you only get one chance at these circuit breakers. You only get one chance to break the COVID circuit. You get one shot. It is not not, uh, 
something we can take lightly. We've got to do it. We've got to do it hard and fast, right? And then we do that. And then within another week, we're back in lockdown. Just find that ironic that you only get one shot at this. Um, but uh, here we are again. No one's fault. Well, it is. I guess it is no one's fault, right? Like no one can foresee this or control it or anything like that. Um, but it is very annoying for all of us. What I <laughs> what I realised though, I've got this little theory. And like, you know, if you're not from Melbourne or Victoria, you probably don't know Dan Andrews as well, especially if you're not from Australia. Premier of Victoria, as I've said. After, you know, for ye- a year and a half, COVID's been going on now. And Daniel Andrews has done a lot of speeches you know, just speeches to the media about, hey, we're going into lockdown. Hey, this, these are my decisions. This is what I've been advised, blah, 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 blah. What I think I realised at the start of lockdown 5.0 is that I think Daniel Andrews may or may not have given up on writing speeches and started to draw inspiration for his COVID lockdown announcements from existing sources. Um, and I realised this really strongly with that lockdown 5.0 speech he made, particularly in relation to the song Lose Yourself by Eminem. We all know Eminem's song, Lose Yourself. Lose yourself in the music, the moment you own it, you better never let it go. Well, right, we all know it. An optimistic and hopeful song. It's a song about taking a chance, taking a leap, right? Going for it, having one shot and just going for it. That's what the song Lose Yourself by Eminem is all about. Um... And I actually think Dan Andrews might have sought some inspiration from Eminem for that speech. Uh, Have a listen to this and just let me know what you think. Here's a switch. You only get one chance to go hard and go fast. If you wait, if you hesitate, then you'll always be looking back wishing you had done more earlier. Now, it's not a word for word by any means. Like... By any means, Dan Andrews hasn't stolen Eminem, but like, can we hear it? Just like, yeah. You only get one chance to go hard and go fast. If you wait, if you hesitate, then you'll always be looking back wishing you had done more earlier. Eminem's lyrics there are, you only get one shot, do not miss your chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. And I really do think I would not be uh, surprised to learn that Daniel Andrews, Premier of Victoria, when going out to do that speech, watched 8 Mile with Eminem and was like, this guy knows what's happening. Sits down and paraphrases Eminem's song Lose Yourself as he goes out to do that speech. I really do believe it. Hear it again. You only get one chance to go hard and go fast. If you wait, if you hesitate, then you'll always be looking back wishing you had done more earlier. There's a lot of similarities there. Daniel Andrews, Premier of Victoria, did you or did you not steal that speech from Eminem? From did you or did you not steal that speech from Eminem? If you did, it's okay. A really great move because I think we do need a lot of um, the positive influence that uh, Eminem sometimes gives in his music, particularly in the song "Lose Yourself," right? Um, I guess. I guess also like you know Eminem's song "Without Me." Daniel Andrews kind of channeled that because he got injured at the end of last year. Victorians will know. He went away for a while, right? It'll feel so empty without me. And it did feel empty without you, Daniel Andrews. I actually think Daniel Andrews is channeling a lot of Eminem and I really, really like it. Keep it up. Would love to see some real Slim Shady references in your next one. Uh, Maybe even some Till I Collapse, a great uh, Eminem song. Love the way you lie. Maybe not appropriate, but... I guess in reference to maybe the opposition or the prime minister, I don't know. Maybe you could utilise the lyrics to those songs in some way. Daniel Andrews, thank you. One other thing on on COVID, because it's the talk of the town. How can you not talk about COVID at a time like this when COVID is rife throughout the nation? Um, And if you're from overseas, I assume COVID is rife throughout your nation. Let me know. Let let me know. Get in touch with the show. Um, Joe Rogan. I actually, you know, a lot of people, uh, it it seems to be either one way or another with Rogan. You know, sometimes he puts out some quote-unquote controversial opinions. 
I think that he's a pretty balanced view of a lot of issues um, that sometimes leans uh, a little to the right. And I, I think a lot of um, really progressive people obviously don't like that. They try to cancel him. I think he's too powerful to be cancelled. Um, and he's too, yeah, I don't know. I don't think he's going to get cancelled anytime soon. However, and, and like, I don't mind Joe Rogan. I don't listen to the podcast. Sometimes the clips come up on my YouTube. I watch them. Generally, I'm like, yeah, that's sort of common sense, kind of what he's saying. I agree with it. But this time, I mean, this is just laughable. I totally disagree with, with Rogan on uh, a, a, a hit piece of sorts that he's put out to the Australian to the Australian people. Um, he's made various comments on Australia. I'm just going to pop my headphones on and I'm going to listen into this. I'm just going to be stopping and starting what Rogan says and commenting on it. So here's some of what Joe Rogan has said on a recent podcast of his about Australia's current situation under lockdown. Australia, Australia confiscated all of their guns in the 1990s. First of all, and this is one to start on, we didn't confiscate the guns really. What happened was there was a huge uh, shooting in Port Arthur in which many people were killed, many innocent people were killed, and we decided that it would be a good idea to buy back the guns so that these kind of things are less and less likely to happen in the future. And they pretty much are. It's been it's very, very rare that gun violence occurs to the level that it does in America, in Australia. So Joe Reagan, Joe Reagan just the first up, we didn't confiscate we didn't confiscate the guns. Um, the government didn't confiscate them. It was a buyback. They didn't go around to people's houses and be like, confiscated. Like a teacher takes a student phone. You get it back at the end. Of, you get it back at the end of class. No, we didn't confiscate them. Fact check number one, Rogan. <laughs> and um, not not saying that they should raise up against the government or, or but. Is that what you were saying? Were you did, did you bring up the gun thing to imply that you think people should? get the guns back and shoot the government? Because that's a pretty aggressive stance, Joe. That's a very aggressive stance. Next. There's some crazy shit going on right now where the army is trying to keep people inside in Australia. (laughs) And one of the things that I read was that as they're doing this, only nine people have died from COVID. Yeah. The last, like, see if that's true. Like, how many people have died recently from COVID in Australia? Because they have <laughs> full-on government lockdowns mm-hmm. where the government is flying helicopters over the streets and go back indoors. You're not... Okay, pause there. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know where this came from because I have not seen in any news source or anywhere in the country... I could be wrong. Hey, I'm the first to admit it. I could be wrong. I have not seen any helicopter flying over anybody's house with someone flying over going, get back inside. That reminds me of that The Simpsons episode. Homer and Marge are swimming naked in their pool and Chief Wiggum flies over in a helicopter with a megaphone and he's just going, come on, continue swimming naked. Come on. (laughs) I'll put the clip in uh, so people can hear the actual voice because my Wigan impersonation is terrible. Do not be alarmed. Continue swimming naked. Oh, come on. Continue. Come on. Oh. But there are no helicopters. Yes, it is a government lockdown. I don't believe the military has anything to do with at least the Victorian lockdowns or the Melbourne lockdowns. I don't think the military is involved at all. Again, could be wrong. First to admit it, okay? Correct me if I'm wrong. Roast to me in the comments. What else did uh, Joe have to say? You're not allowed to be outside, yeah. which is crazy. You are allowed to be outside. You are allowed to be outside. I've been outside many times. You're actually allowed to do a lot. You're allowed to go to the supermarket. You're allowed to exercise. You're allowed to go for walks with people. It's not like some 1984 dystopian future sci-fi here. I mean, it's a little fucked up and people aren't really happy. And that's totally fair because a lot of our, you know, freedom of day-to-day life has been taken away from us, Joe. But we're certainly not, not allowed to go outside with helicopters flying over houses telling us to go back in. Um, next. This disease doesn't even transmit well outside. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, What does that actually mean, that the disease doesn't transmit well outside? Because as far as, like, at least the Delta strain, it is very clear that it spreads very fast and very quick anywhere. Like, 
there were people at a footy match who were not even seated near each other, but it's transmitted towards all of them, right? I don't know what that disease not transmitting well outside thing comes from, but uh, here we are. Being outside and getting vitamin D from the sun is probably one of the best things you can do. I have no comment on that, really. One, we are allowed to go outside. Two, just... What? October 20th, you have zero deaths until July 11. Yeah. Yeah, one July day. 11, you have one death. And you got a little spike there. What's that spike? How many it's people like is that? One or two, actually. Oh, that's crazy. A full-on government lockdown or the military. Okay, again, no military. Yes, government lockdown. But also, can I just say, Joe Rogan, the reason why we have had so few deaths here in Australia from COVID. And yes, we have deaths and those lives do matter and it is very sad that those people died. But the reason why, comparatively to, let's type in USA COVID deaths, Joe Rogan, let's see. Uh, total deaths over the, since COVID, nearly half a million, oh, sorry, over half a million people dead in the USA. Over half a million people dead in the USA. Australia COVID deaths, We've had less than 1,000. I'm not taking anything away from the people that died. It is very sad that those people died. But comparatively, right, the reason why we have had so few deaths, Joe Rogan, from COVID is because of those lockdowns. You said deaths from October to July. We came out of our biggest lockdown at the end of October 2020, right? We essentially, at that stage, had eliminated COVID, at least in Victoria, right? It was very controlled. We had it totally under control, Joe Rogan, right? It's not a thing of, like, the government lockdowns are so unnecessary because so few people are dying. The government lockdowns, these military dystopian helicopter lockdowns, they are why we have had so few deaths. That is why we have had more than 600 times less deaths than the USA. Okay, like, I'm sure there's a population, uh, you know, throw out there, but I think, you know, if you do it per capita, you would realize that there is comparatively less deaths, deaths in Australia from COVID than there have been in the USA. I just heard Joe Rogan saying all this stuff, and I was just like, what? No helicopters, guys, absolutely no helicopters. I must move on, but, uh, you know, take everything everyone says with a huge grain of salt. You know, our Premier's quoting Eminem, Joe Rogan's quoting some unknown facts about COVID. Who knows? Um, I want to do a quick shout out to Radio Griff. Welcome to the Radio Family, Radio Griff. Um, I appeared again on the Hamish and Andy podcast this week, um, and I'll talk a little bit, bit about that in a sec, but I wanted to read out Griff's email he got in contact at radiomike.com.au slash contact. You can go there. You can go radiomikepod at gmail.com. You can go uh, the phone number, 1-800-438-353, radio.mike on Insta, however you want to get in touch. I will also quickly use this to plug the Patreon bonus podcast with me and Pat each week. Pat quit the show last week. Um, we talk all about that on the bonus podcast. Patreon.com slash radiomike. Little is a dollar a month. Feel free to jump on and off. Like if you've got, if you want to hear it for a month, hear the podcast. And then you're like, oh, I can't afford this this month. Jump off when you can. Jump back on paypal.me slash radio mic. So, sorry, paypal.me slash it's radio mic, I-T-S radio mic. You can also donate there. If you donate a dollar, I will send you the most recent bonus podcast. Exclusive podcast. We are going to be getting some guests on that. So behind, they'll be on Patreon exclusives. So they'll be with uh, Jack Post is going to jump on. Uh, a few other people are going to jump on. So please get on board the Patreon. It's growing every week and I really appreciate it. If you haven't jumped on already, uh, I'm planning some more bonus stuff again. It's hard at the moment because life feels like it's on hold and I can't do that much. Um, but please, uh, yeah, keep in, uh, consider donating if you like the show or anything I do. I'd really appreciate it. It really helps me out. Um, Griff. Hi, Mike. Just wanted to get in touch to say I really love your content. Thank you so much. I'm a big fan of Hamish and Andy and love when you're on the pod. Thank you so much. Uh, the gaming talk and Pokemon segments are some of my favorite moments. I loved listening to you on Jack's podcast too. That's Jack Post podcast, Jackie Road Studios. Despite knowing about your podcast for ages, I've only just started listening to it and I've been really enjoying it. Thanks, Griff. Thank you so much, Griff. And can I say a general thank you to um, the uh, myriad and plethora of people 
who got in touch with me to say that they really enjoyed my stuff on H&A. Um, just so people know, um, I never, I never go to them and say, hey, get me on this week, I've got something. I never do that. Um, it's often I am, I am just brought in without me actually knowing that it has anything to do with me. Like, it's all kept secret from me. I'm brought in as a surprise and there's certainly um, a, uh, a, a, a character that I'm playing into on that show. Um, and I received heaps of positive feedback, people saying that they loved it, they found it funny, that it was some of their favourite moments that I always deliver and um, that they'd love to hear more of me. And that really meant a lot to me. Um, I will also say, and I'm, this is not, yeah, I'm just going to put it out there, did get a couple of uh, negative and sometimes very personal messages about me um, explaining why I'm not good and why people don't like me, which I'm now coming to realise is just part of being on, sometimes being on one of the biggest podcasts in the country, um, and that's okay. But I guess the main thing about that that I just wanted to raise is like, you know, I, I've kind of made a conscious decision now to not engage anymore, which is kind of sad because, you know, before being on the Hamish and Andy podcast, I was a fan of Hamish and Andy. I was a huge fan of them. I still am, right? And I'm privileged to work on the show. Um, but what I've realised now is that I don't think I can engage in any Hamish and Andy fan communities because... Um, okay, sorry, guys. I would have stopped uh, haphazardly there because I realised that the um, recording stopped on the computer. So some of the podcast is now going to have to be camera audio because I don't want to redo it which is annoying but yeah what I was saying was I yeah I've decided I'm no longer going to engage in any um fan communities for the pod because it's just like it's not worth me seeing people <laughs> essentially just like ripping into me and why they don't like me which is totally reasonable and I'm realizing that it's not possible for me to reach a state in which uh, everybody thinks I'm great. That's just not possible and people are going to hate me. So, yeah, I'm just going to withdraw from those sections. Um, and I really appreciate all the people who sent positive feedback. There was certainly more positive feedback than negative, but um, the negative definitely tends to stand out a little bit more. Um, so just food for thought, I would... Uh, love to not, <laughs> I think it's more just like all the insecurities that you have about yourself, that you worry that people are thinking about you, you realize that they probably are, which is a difficult thing um, that not many people have to deal with. And I definitely need to learn how to get better at that, but uh, I'm going to do my best at that. But on that topic, I do definitely need to talk about what happened on that Hamish and Andy segment, uh, because I was absolutely robbed, as a lot of people uh, have brought to my attention for several reasons. If you didn't hear it, this is essentially when I realised that everything was spiralling out of control as an underprepared and terribly researched Hamish Blake asked me this question. Super Mario Kart was the game that in which character appeared for the last time. So it was the last time this character ever appeared. Mike? Mike. Look, the only character I could think, well, well, I don't know, but is it, it, could it be Donkey Kong Jr.? Oh, he's got it. Now, here's what happened there. I, this was a Super Mario quiz. You know, that was the question. The reason I guessed Donkey Kong Jr. is because I assumed, as I will say a little bit later, I assumed that Hamish had this question wrong. Proving in that sense that, not only do I know more about Super Mario than the other guy, but I predicted the mistake that Hamish had made. Here's what I said. He's well, got that, well, then that's, that's not correct, though. Well, so it is not, actually. That's yeah, not, yeah, yeah. Because Donkey yeah. Kong Jr. has been in several mm, games, including yeah, Mario was... Tennis 64. I did post on my Instagram, and I did, 
I didn't hesitate with this because I know for a fact that Donkey Kong Jr. was in Mario Tennis 64, which I believe came out in the year 2000 or 99 on the Nintendo 64, the successor to the Super Nintendo, which is the game that Super Mario Kart, the original Mario Kart, not many people have played this. I think most people's first one was Mario Kart 64. In Super Mario Kart, Donkey Kong Jr. is in that game. Donkey Kong, the normal Donkey Kong, is not in that game. Um, So that was an incorrect question that I got served. I predicted it wrong, as I say here. Yes, but he was in that before he... No, no, that was definitely after. Okay, okay, okay. (laughs) Definitely after (laughs) Super Mario Kart. Well done. (laughs) (laughs) So I almost didn't say Donkey Kong Jr. because I knew it was wrong, but I thought you would have gotten it wrong. No, Donkey Kong Sr. was not in that game. Okay, so there pretty much explains everything. I did assume that Hamish would have made that mistake, so I went in with the prediction that he would have gotten it wrong, as I say there, and I was right. So, again, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about Donkey Kong Jr., but uh, I also, it was raised to my attention by Radio Lazar. Uh, who clarified that uh, on this question at the end... King bob and Wiggler appeared as boss fights in which game? Mike. 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 Super Mario 64. On the that is incorrect. Uh, incorrect. Actually, it's not incorrect. In fact, it is correct. Uh, so I don't know where this quiz was drawn from. Uh, that is correct. As Lazza pointed out, uh, you bel- you battle King bob in the first world, which is bob Battlefield, and then you battle... Uh, Wiggler later in the game in Tiny Huge Island or whatever that level is called. So I actually was correct on that as well. Whatever. I'm not complaining. It is what it is. Um, I might just close this blind because the lighting... Yeah, that's a bit better. I think the glare of the sun. Video viewers, audio viewers, listeners won't understand that, but the blind next to me is open. The sun's coming in. It's glaring up the screen. Anyway, so let's just, let's forget about this whole uh, Hamish and Andy saga and how I was wronged, how I was deathly wronged uh, by Hamish Blake. It is what it is. The true conspiracy and the true mystery here of all of this, and this might come as a shock to all of you, and I'm probably the only podcast in Australia, possibly the world, but I'd say definitely Australia. I am the only podcast in Australia that will bring you this conspiracy. Forget about the Hamish and Andy stuff. Let's talk Donkey Kong Jr., right? Because if there's one thing he is right about, Hamish is right in that Donkey Kong Jr., the character, is a very, uh, is a character that very rarely appears these days. Has not appeared in a game for a very long time. And I guess it draws the question, who is Donkey Kong Jr.? And this is not an investigative journalism podcast, but I do have to, uh, outlie a little bit of this theory that I have about Donkey Kong Jr., the character, because essentially Donkey Kong Jr., the the original, here's a little bit of Nintendo history for you all. The original game that both Mario and Donkey Kong appeared in was called Jump, was called Donkey Kong. It was the arcade Donkey Kong game. You're probably familiar with it. The red, like girders, Donkey Kong's like King Kong and Mario has to climb up and save the princess, right? And... Mario was called Jumpman at this point. Donkey Kong was Donkey Kong. And then after that game was released, they released a game called Donkey Kong Jr. where now you were playing as Donkey Kong Jr., the son of Donkey Kong, as you would expect. Uh, And Mario has kidnapped Donkey Kong. You're Donkey Kong Jr. You're saving Donkey Kong from being kidnapped from Mario. But here's where it actually gets a little bit weird because then in... Say Mario Tennis 64, as I raised, Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. are both in that game. And I think, and I might just double check this, I think that may have been, I want to see what the last ever appearance of Donkey Kong Jr. is, because this is actually going to blow your mind when you find this out. Okay, his latest appearance is in Mario Kart Tour, which is that um, iPhone mobile Mario Kart game. Not, doesn't really count. Before that... His last appearance as a... I, I want his last appearance as a playable character. Um, okay, a lot of his appearances are, are cameos. His last appearance was Mario Tennis. He was an unlockable playable character, the doubles partner for Donkey Kong 
year 2000, right? Here's where it gets weird. The Donkey Kong of today, the Donkey Kong we all know, uh, he's in games like Super Smash Bros. He's in games like Donkey Kong 64. He's in games like Donkey Kong Country. What if I told you, and this is going to blow your mind, this is going to blow your mind. What if I told you that the modern day Donkey Kong that you know and love is not actually the father of Donkey Kong Jr., as you might expect. But get this. You, this is going to blow your mind. The Donkey Kong that you know today, right, is actually the son of Donkey Kong Jr. <laughs> Does that blow your mind? It certainly blows mine. I'm going to explain how. And this is a quite a known fan theory, but it's, it's very interesting. To me, I'm sure to you it's not, but to me it is. Donkey Kong Jr. is such an interesting character, right? Because he's actually the father of the current Donkey Kong. Why? There is another character in the Donkey Kong universe. That character's name is Cranky Kong. Cranky Kong is an old grandpa uh, that is like the grandfather of the modern Donkey Kong, right? The modern Donkey Kong. And... In some of the Donkey Kong Country games, which were developed by Rare in the 90s, Cranky Kong, right, get this, actually reveals through various things he says that he is the original Donkey Kong from that original Donkey Kong arcade game. He is that Donkey Kong now aged and old, right? That was him. That was Cranky Kong the modern day Donkey Kong's father. Sorry, the modern day Donkey Kong's grandfather, right? So you've got, we're talking the Kong family tree here, right? You've got Cranky Kong here, the original Donkey Kong. And remember, after that game came out, who was the character that had to come and save that Donkey Kong from Mario? Donkey Kong Jr., right? And then Donkey Kong Jr., right, whose father was Cranky Kong, who at that time was known as Donkey Kong, right? Donkey Kong Jr.'s son is modern-day Donkey Kong. So really, all three of them are called Donkey Kong. Cranky Kong was Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong Jr. was the son of Cranky Kong, a.k.a. Donkey Kong. That's where he gets the junior appendage. And then Donkey Kong current day who should really be called Donkey Kong Jr. Jr. That blew my mind. Donkey Kong Jr. is the father of the modern Donkey Kong, not the son. Insanity. Absolutely crazy. Donkey Kong Jr. was sort of phased out for Diddy Kong. He ended up getting sort of replaced by Diddy Kong. He's not been around for a very, very long time, but yeah, that's pretty crazy. The Cranky Kong, the old grandpa, was the original Donkey Kong. His son is Donkey Kong Jr., which then I guess for Mario Tennis indicates that that Donkey Kong in that is Cranky Kong. But anyway, it's just, it blows my mind. Let me know other fan theories of games like that because that is my favourite fan theory in the world. Well, it's not really a fan theory. It's confirmed by in-game material. Absolutely crazy. Um, a little bit more to go here, guys. First of all is an update on the Grilled Saga. I, thought, I, 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 I bet you thought we weren't going to hear any more about Grilled, but I know. Mikey doesn't stop until Mikey gets. The last thing I want, the last thing I was talking about with Grilled was people people seem to be calling me a sellout. People seem to think that I've sold out, that I sold out to Grill. They get Grilled. They gave me money to do all the uh, publicity I did for them, which admittedly was a lot. I have never accepted any money from Grilled. I have never accepted anything from Grilled. And then the last time I talked about it, I said, I do deserve a freebie from Grilled for all the work I've been doing for them. Now, nothing has happened. And then earlier this week, I did a story on Instagram and that story was of a a coffee I got, a takeaway coffee I got on the first day of lockdown 6.0. The barista drew a picture on my uh, coffee cup that said, be happy. It says B and there is a picture of a B on it. And I posted that on an Insta story. Grilled on Instagram replied, some are born great. This is what they said. Some are born great, some achieve great, and some have greatness thrust upon their coffee cup. And I replied to the amusement of many, many people who follow me, uh, simply with, please give me a free burger. (laughs) 
you know, I want my free burger from Grilled. People already think I've sold out, which I didn't ever sell out. I had a genuine change of heart. And now, right, now I want my money's worth from it. Almost an hour later, Grilled replies. If you sign up to Relish, Relish is Grilled's like members program. If you sign up to Relish, we'll put a free burger on your account. I immediately signed up to Relish. At Friday at 6.13 p.m., they said one of us, a Simpsons reference, thank you so much for knowing so much about me, and then said, let us know the email you signed up with and we'll get the goods sorted. Should be av- Saturday, 2.57 p.m., a day later. Should be available in your account now. Sometimes takes up to 24 hours. Ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to hide the barcode, but... Uh, I got a free burger from Grilled. I got a free burger from Grilled. It made all of this worth it. I got a free burger. I obviously can't go into a Grilled store at the moment because of lockdown. But as soon as lockdown's over, I am getting out to Grilled. I am getting my free burger. Recommendations, I am taking them. Comment what you think I got. I should get. Last time I got a uh, healthy fried chicken burger. This time, I think I want a bit of Grilled beef. I want a bit of beef, right? Uh, Grilled then said, a peace treaty in and out. It's a beautiful thing. Grilled and me are sweet. Uh, I would still, Grilled, if you're listening, I would love like 50 bucks, I think would be fair. I'll just send you my bank details. You can send me 50 bucks. I would really appreciate that. Let me know what you think. Um, Speaking of, we do have a few other goals of the show at the moment. Um, And uh, the 20th century board has, was lost in the move. It was lost in the move from Northcote to Kew to my parents, and it was not found on the move from Kew to Kensington, where I am now. So I thought this was a good opportunity to go through some of the goals of the show that I remember and just check in if we still want to do them. The first one is the Monopoly game. Um, This is something I still really want to do, where I play three members of the Radio Family in Monopoly, uh, and beat them, obviously. I played an online Monopoly with a friend during the last lockdown, won by a mile. So really looking forward to that. Still want to do the Monopoly game for the Radio Family. Looking forward to that. Post-lockdown, I want it to be an in-person thing. Number two. Number two is Chicken Episode 2.0, which I now live, not to dox my location, but I live very, very close to, probably like a minute walk away. So uh, I still definitely want to do Chicken Episode 2.0 as a meetup for the podcast where if you're in Melbourne, post-lockdown, we're all going to go to Chicken Episode 2.0, the second best chicken in Kensington, and go and eat chicken there because it's the second best in Kensington, and we love that. Um, What else is there? The third one is Gumballarama. I still want to do that. If you want to donate money, I'm going to empty a gumball machine with 20 cent coins. Feel free to donate a gumball, 20 cents or five gumballs for a dollar. PayPal.me slash it's radio mic. Uh, I'm going to, I've chosen the target. It's near my house as well, near chicken episode 2.0 as well. So I'm definitely going to do that. Lockdown has really put a lot of stuff on halt, which is really annoying, but we are getting to all this stuff. And uh, finally, getting a pasta with Sammy Garlep. Uh, listeners will know that a while ago I asked Sammy Garlep to get dinner with me when I bumped into him at work at the radio station at like seven o'clock. Uh, I asked him to get a pasta with me downstairs at Eto Pasta and with almost no explanation, Sammy Garlep refused to get pasta with me and we didn't get pasta that night. So I still want to do that. I just wanted to get Sammy on the line to check if he is still comfortable uh, getting a pasta with me for a goal of the podcast. I want to see if he even remembers. So I'm just going to dial the number in now. Hopefully Sammy picks up. Whoops, I'm not connected to the to the system here. So just give me two seconds, guys. I'm just going to connect up to that. Roadcaster Pro, thanks, Road. Send any free stuff my way. I would really appreciate that. Um, all right, here we go. We are connected and we are dialing. Hopefully this works. Oh, it's ringing. Oh, hey, Sammy, uh, it's Mike. I uh, just wanted to give you a call to see to chat to you on the podcast. Let me know if you can. I might call you again right now. All right, I'm going to call him again right now, like I told him. Maybe he'll pick up this time. Oh, here he is. He's, he's calling back. He's calling back. All right, end and accept. 
Uh, Sam Gallup, you're on the Hello. podcast. Oh, hey, I'm on the podcast. Can yes. you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How are you? Oh, very well. Radio Mike. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me as always. I, I don't even know which podcast I'm on at the moment. You do so many. You're on 20th Century Boy, the, the flagship Mike podcast. Yes, the original and the best. Uh, I wouldn't go that far, but yes, it is original. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, really simple call. Won't keep you for too long. Um, oh, well, I've locked out the rest of the day. So, uh, well, that's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to. I'm just doing an audit of goals I have for the podcast, and obviously, yeah. our pastor was one of them. Of course, yeah, the pastor. Yeah, yeah. I've got. I've, I've got that written down somewhere as well. Oh, just as one of your uh, general goals, or as a podcast? Yeah. <laughs> I just write it down. Every time I, I remember it, I write it down. Yeah, um, okay. <laughs> so, I actually think about it every time I have pasta because I would say up until we were meant to get pasta this year or whatever that was, up until we were meant to get pasta in the year, I probably had pasta very few times out and about. Yeah, I, I think my, my, my pasta intake has gone up five, six hundred percent. Five, I'm, five I'm, or six hundred percent, did you say? Yeah, I'm, I'm mostly pasta now. I'm, I'm, I'm 60% rigatoni. <laughs> okay. well, I'm a walking tortellini. A walking tortellini. Okay, interesting. Well, what I wanted to check, like I honestly, one, I thought you would have forgotten. Clearly you haven't, which is great news. No, yeah. Because I'm sure, no, of course, no. I, I think all the listeners are just like holding out for this pasta to happen. Oh, you know, every time I listen to 20th Century Boy, I can just sense that as an audience, everyone's thinking, I don't know what they're part of it. It's part of the stuff. It definitely isn't just a random flight on the podcast. <laughs> um, and then also, yeah, I, I, still, I still want to do it post-lockdown if you still want to do it. And I honestly just wanted to check if you were cool with it. Wait, say that again? Oh, I still want to get pasta when lockdown's over, and I just wanted to make sure. Very funny. Cause it, hang on. Um, it's very funny because it, it, keep, I, 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 it keeps breaking up my end, and I don't know whether you're asking me to abandon the idea of pasta or whether you're asking me to continue to promise to get pasta. I don't want to say yes, but I, my, what I want to do is I still want to get pasta. Okay, well, that's interesting because I guess the listeners know what I said, but you don't know oh, what no. I said. So... <laughs> Now that we know you do want to get pasta, I'm going to hang up with no further information about what I said. And if you want to, if you want to listen to the podcast to find out what I said amidst all this confusion of the dodgy connection, you're welcome to do so. Otherwise, I may or may not see you for pasta post lockdown. <laughs> I'm not going to find out. Okay, this is like a pending date. It's a Wait, pending date. Yeah. I'm leaving you with that. Thanks for being on the pod. <laughs> okay, thanks, Radio Boy. <laughs> there you go. He didn't hear what I said. Obviously, I do want to get past it with him still. Seems he's on the same page, so it is a date. Uh, I think we're just about done for this week's episode, so let's do this. Sorry, guys, I pressed the complete wrong button. <laughs> I just pressed the complete wrong button. This. <laughs> the plug! <laughs> Potter and the Boys is still on hiatus. I want to get people in in with me. It's harder to do it over Zoom. It's just not the same chemistry. Hiatus until we're back out of lockdown. There's, I think, three or four chapters left of the first book. Then we will kick off season two. I'll do an announcement on that feed, and I'm very sorry. I'm genuinely very sorry. Um, again, lockdown is just halting a lot. Um, I talked about how I was going to start Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. I didn't. Instead, I bought Link's Awakening on Nintendo Switch. I've been playing that and I really like it. It is a lot of fun. So I might do a, a more substantial chat about that in a future week. Uh, just got a text. Okay, it's not from Sammy. Um, what else? Mike Talks, I want to bring back post-lockdown. It's just, again, lockdown is halting everything. Check out all the other stuff I do. Not too much to plug at the moment, which is... Uh, kind of annoying uh yeah the youtube channel i'm doing a few more updates on there plus my monthly movie vlog for uh july is up 
So please go and check that out. I'll hopefully do a few videos this week as well. Um, go and subscribe there, like the videos, watch them. I'd really appreciate it. I want to do a Q&A on the channel as well. Like if you have any questions and stuff, just post them to me and I'll try and do a Q&A on the channel very soon. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. My name's in Radio Mike. Thank you so much for listening. Don't block the MDF. This has been the inside of my mind. Uh, I always, I've made too many of these, so for today, I'm bowing out by pressing the wrong button. Catch you later, everybody. Thank you.